Workshop Topics The pros and cons of using small brass steam engines Brass is really not suitable for making model steam engines as it does not wear well but in reality many smaller brass engines run very well and don't appear to wear out prematurely Here are some examples From my experience it appears to be down to the loading on the brass For instance, I once built a Stuart Models S50 and I decided to bush the cast iron bed plate with what I thought was phosphor bronze, but it wasn't, it was brass. And before I'd finished running the engine in, the bushes wore out. Brass engines do work quite well, providing the loading is not excessive. And here are some examples. This is a Microcosm engine, beautifully made. It would appear that the company Microcosm have a constant policy of improvement. As new models are released which are similar to each other, they're definitely an improvement. Here are my thoughts and observations on this particular engine. Looking at this engine, it is a really nice thing. It's extremely small and it runs superbly. I fitted the Microcosm displacement lubricator to this engine, but that's a bit over scale. The expansion links on this engine look like they're made from stainless steel. And after about three years, as there's no rust anywhere on it, I think the other parts are made from stainless steel too. I'm about to run this engine, so obviously I'm oiling it first. Brass doesn't wear particularly well, and some brass engines, particularly the larger ones, seem to wear out fairly quickly. However, this is generally not the case with these small engines. I have noticed that Chinese stainless steel appears to be much harder than the stuff we normally get over here. Similarly, on some Chinese engines, the brass castings are really hard too. A friend of mine sent some drawings to China a few years ago and what came back was nothing like the drawing. The engines were quite well made and the brass castings seemed to wear well. It went downhill from there though, but that's another story. I got the job of partially rebuilding the engines just to make them work. No such problems with this engine though, it really does run beautifully, considering how small it is. I noticed that the eccentric design is quite similar to the way Saito engines are made. That's a Japanese manufacturer. What can I fault this engine on if I want to be ultra picky? I really dislike the physical size of the hexagon bolts that hold the cylinder covers in place. I don't much like the reversing gear arrangement as it's a bit rattly at one side of the travel and I really hate the grub screws and the Allen head cap screws. But after saying that, well, it just works. This one's a bit on the small side. And you can see how small it is if I hold it in front of a Stuart 5A. Having said that, a Stuart 5A is quite a large engine, but it's a very small engine. It fits easily in the palm of my hand. I'm now going to show you an engine that I've just bought via eBay from a seller called Mooseman underscore Steam. I've had dealings with this seller before, and he really is very good, and he can buy anything that he has for sale on eBay with confidence. This is a Microcosm M30 steam engine. As I got it out of the box, I was amazed at the quality of the casting and machining. First thing to do, as with the previous engine, is thoroughly oil it. Here's a close-up of the expansion link mechanism at one side. This is more like watchmaking. Although this expansion link needs straightening out a little bit, it's been sprained. This engine is very free running. As I rotate the flywheel, you may notice it also has a governor. Just in case you're curious what these engines are called, the one on the left is called an M30 and the one on the right is called an M29. And there are some obvious differences between the two models. As I mentioned earlier, these are the oversized bolts holding the cylinder covers in place. But now on the M30, they are perfect. It's such a pity though, that the inlet manifold and the outlet manifold are held in place by Allen cap head screws. I don't get this, because if you look on the M29, with its massive cylinder cover bolts, the manifolds are held in place with the correct size hexagon bolt. I would like to show you a Cheddar Models Puffin that I have, which is on the left. And now it's time for a direct comparison between the Mark II and the Mark I. This is the Mark I and the first thing that you notice that's different is the displacement lubricator. The Mark I has the drain tap on the bottom and besides that it's entirely different to the Mark II. Have a close look. 
If I'm honest, I think I prefer the design of the Mark I. It just seems to look better. These are great little steam engines. I've had two or three of these over the years, and they're really powerful for the size. And this one runs very sweetly. I just open the regulator and off it goes. It works perfectly in both directions, and it would be suitable for a boat up to about four feet in length. These are some images from my website showing a model boat that I built quite a few years ago, long before I started making the videos, and this was fitted with a puffin steam plant, and it ran very well indeed. The condenser was of the type that I used to make and sell, but I don't do that anymore. Here's the Mark II puffin that I currently have, and as you can see it runs very well indeed. The next engine to undergo a steam test is the Basil Harley designed twin oscillating cylinder steam engine. This steam engine is of the type normally fitted to a Miranda steam launch. And when it's running on steam it is surprisingly powerful. The combination regulator and reversing lever could do with a little bit of attention. It's a bit leaky and it needs lapping to the port face. It's a soft soldered item so it's quite an easy fix. This is a very robust design of engine, and I do like the way that the oscillating cylinders are held against the port face. As in the previous test, I'm now going to turn off the gas burner and stop talking. For the third test, this is a pair of SVS twin oscillating cylinder steam engines, complete with boilers. These are very neat, very small and very well made, and they would be ideal to be used in a twin propeller steamboat project, or to be used as power plants for a pair of matching steamboats. For this steam test I'm using an external steam supply from my Stuart Models 3500 series boiler. I'm not using the copper boilers that are normally attached to these engines. My friend James Evans came down to see me from Darlington and brought with him a couple of steam engines, which are nothing like the ones I've just shown. These were sent to James in order for him to feature them in reviews on his YouTube channel, the name of which is shown on screen at the moment. It's called T's Cottage Guy Productions. The channel is named as such because James is a volunteer at a place called T's Cottage. Today James is sat next to me in the workshop as I make this video. And just in case some viewers are confused, the part on the right hand side is not a spacecraft. It is a small boiler. I'm going to switch over now to live audio in the workshop so the quality is not as good, but at least you can hear what we're saying. James is about to light the methylated spirit burner. The methylated spirit burner, as you can see clearly in this clip, is very small. And relative to some small spirit burners that I have, this one does not seem to be giving off too much heat. Finally, some time later, there was sufficient steam to rotate the flywheel. And look at the flywheel, it's a bit wobbly. Back over now to live audio. That's interesting. The first thing we notice is that the flywheel is not quite revolving concentrically. Uh, but you can't have everything. Will it go any faster than that? We cheated on this bit, we stopped the engine for a while and let the pressure build up inside the boiler. Well the flywheel still looks wonky to me. Why is the flywheel wonky? Did you do that when you assembled it? £127. You got it as a free sample. Yeah. I'm constantly getting uh, messages from these Chinese companies, including this one. Yeah. Uh, and I don't ever take them up on the offer because I really don't do sponsorship. If you do sponsorship, you're supposed to say this is a wonderful engine, mm. but yeah, it's all right. But 127 pounds, I think, even though I'm not a great Mamod fan, I think I'd buy a Mamod or a Willesco rather than that. Yeah. Although the flywheel is very nice, albeit wonky. It's quite hefty as well. Mm. It's whatever floats people's boats, I find. I mean, one man's meat is another man's poison. There are lots of different phrases and sayings, but that's not doing anything for me. That's the high point of the review, really, blowing out the methylated spirit burner. 
But I must say, it's a very nicely made thing, as most of the things that come from the Far East are very nicely made, but I don't know, I don't get it really. Single acting, piston valve, not very powerful, an aluminium bracket holding the governor. Not very fast. That's an understatement. And that's about all I can say. I hope you've enjoyed this special feature all about brass engines. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.